Welcome, my name is Rob Masters and I'm Product Manager with Syntax Audio UK. This video is designed to be a brief overview of what Dudmix FX can do. We won't go into too much detail right now, that will be left to the forthcoming tutorial. We're going to start with an overview of the main Total Mix window. Here we have a bank of faders at the top which correspond to the physical inputs of the Fireface itself. We have a bank here which is all the software playback channels, so output from Logic, from Cubase, from, from iTunes for example. And we have a bank of physical outputs down the bottom, which correspond to outputs on the Fireface itself. Over here we have our main output section, which includes the headphone outputs, the main outputs which are assignable, and uh, a variety of functions corresponding to those. We also have the FX bus, we have an options menu corresponding to the views and we have a number of savable mix settings along with uh, mute, solo and fader groups. Let's look at the inputs now in more detail. You can see every channel has its own level meter as well as a mute and solo button and there's a pan pot for every channel as well from left to right. Each channel has more settings, so if you tap the spanner symbol, then it brings up options such as stereo, which allows you to configure an input as either a stereo pair or as a mono channel. If we look at a mic input, then you can see there's a gain control for the mic preamp, as well as a 48 volt phantom power switch and a high Z impedance switch as well. For each channel, there's an FX send as well as a phase invert button uh, and for stereo channels there's a stereo width control and the option to engage MS processing. If we look at the line input then you also get the option to change the reference level so you can change it from minus 10, plus 4 or low gain. Within each playback channel in the middle row you can again adjust the mute solo, you can adjust the pan and there's the uh, level meter as well. You can switch between stereo and mono in the settings dialog as well as control the stereo width, the FX send, MS processing and phase inversion again. Pretty much the same as the inputs. Moving on to the outputs now, we can see again the pan control, the mute control and the level meter. We also have the Q control. One click of the Q control allows you to send the output from for example this pair here directly to the main outputs, so it's an easy way to monitor. Again within settings we have the FX return instead of send this time. We have a phase inversion and uniquely to the outputs we have the loop back switch which allows you with one click to send the output signal directly back to the input of software. So for example if I wanted to record the submix on this channel uh, back into Logic I could click the loop back and it would be available to Logic for recording. And again with the line outputs we are able to select a reference level so here from minus 10 dBV, plus 4 dBU and high gain. All of the hardware inputs and hardware outputs have both an EQ and dynamics. This is true of every channel across the inputs so there's an EQ plus a compressor and expander for every single channel. Likewise on the outputs, both an EQ and dynamics for every channel. Moving on to the control room, we have our freely assignable main outputs and headphone outputs. Each channel is similar to the hardware outputs and it has the same options for mute, Q, pan and also the FX return, phase inversion and loopback. For the headphones, the reference level is selectable between high and low for difference in impedance headphones. And for the main outputs there is in addition to the three standard reference levels plus 24 dBU. There are a number of controls for dim, for level recall, mono, for talkback and also to mute the FX. You're free to route any of the hardware inputs and software playback channels to any output on the bottom row in any configuration, any mix, any pan uh, and any combination which is a really powerful feature of Total Mix and something we'll explore more in a later tutorial. Here we have the FX section 
which allows you to define a number of parameters for reverb and echo. Uh, we have a number of options for the view. We have the master mute and solo, as well as an undo redo button, which is always quite useful. And we can save mix settings as snapshots down here for recall later. Down here we have the mute, solo and fader groups. So you can set up a group of channels that can be muted at once, like that for example. Same for solo, and you can set up groups of faders which will be linked together. As well as the mixer view, there is also the matrix view. So a nice way to get an overview of all the currently set up routings, as well as create new routings and adjust levels. So for example, we can see here we have a routing set up from mic input 9 to the headphone outputs. We can set up new routings simply by double clicking and adjust gains as well. That was a quick overview of the features and functions of RME's Total Mix FX. We've really only scratched the surface of what this immensely powerful tool is capable of, so we'll be producing a full tutorial that will go into much more detail later on. Until then, thank you for listening and all the best. Thank you.